Hello, my name is Dr Alan Kerry and I'd like to welcome you to the third podcast from the South End GP Vocational Training Scheme. In this podcast I will discuss the NICE guidelines for the management of feverish illness in children with my fellow GP trainer Dr Sunil Gupta. For further information please look at National Institute for Health and Clinical Excellence website which is at www.nice.org.uk. So Sunil, why are these guidelines important? These guidelines are important because feverish illness in children is the most common reason for children to be taken to the doctor, is a cause of concern for parents and carers, can be a result of a simple self-limiting infection or a life-threatening infection and can have no apparent source. In this context then, what is the traffic light system? The traffic light system is a tool for identifying the likelihood of serious illness. Children with only symptoms and signs in the green column are at low risk. Children with one or more symptom or sign in the amber column are at intermediate risk. And children with one or more symptom or sign in the red column are at high risk. So when is the traffic light system green? The traffic light system is green when we take into account colour, activity, hydration and other symptoms and sign. So for colour, normal colour of skin, lips and tongue. For activity, the patient responds normally to social cues, is content stroke smiles, stays awake or awakens quickly and has a strong or normal cry or is not crying. In terms of hydration, there is normal skin and eyes and moist mucous membranes. And in terms of other symptoms and signs, there are none of the amber or red symptoms or signs. So when is the traffic light system amber? So going through colour, activity, respiration, hydration and other again. It's amber if the colour in the colour section where... Pallor is reported by parent stroke carer. For activity, the patient is not responding normally to social cues or wakes only with prolonged stimulation or decreased activity or no smile. For respiratory, if there is nasal flaring or if there's tachypnea, that is a respiratory rate greater than 50 per minute for children aged between 6 and 12 months old and a respiratory rate greater than 40 per minute for children aged greater than 12 months old. Other respiratory symptoms and signs are oxygen saturation less than or equal to 95% in air and crackles. In the hydration section, the traffic light system is amber if there's dry mucous membranes or poor feeding in infants or capillary refill time greater than or equal to three seconds or reduced urine output and for other symptoms and signs the traffic light system is amber if there's fever for greater than or equal to five days or if there's a swelling of a limb or joint or if the patient is non-weight bearing or not using extremity or if there's a new lump greater than two centimeters. And so when is the traffic light system red? So going through colour, activity, respiratory, hydration and other again, the traffic light system is red if in the colour section the patient is pale or mottled or ashen or blue. In the activity section if there is no response to social cues or the patient appears ill to a healthcare professional or is unable to rouse or if roused it does not stay awake or if there's a weak cry or a high pitched cry or a continuous cry. In the respiratory section the traffic light system is red if the patient is grunting, if there's tachypnea respiratory rate greater than 60 per minute or moderate or severe chest in drawing. In hydration The traffic light system is red if there's reduced skin turga and in terms of other symptoms and signs for age 0 to 3 months old the temperature is greater than 
or equal to 38 degrees. For age 3 to 6 months old, if the temperature is greater than or equal to 39 degrees. And other symptoms and signs which make the traffic light system red are non-blanching rash, neck stiffness, focal neurological signs, bile-stained vomiting, bulging fontanelle, status epilepticus and focal seizures. What does NICE advise about the detection of fever? In children aged four weeks to five years, we should measure the body temperature by electronic thermometer in the axilla or chemical dot thermometer in the axilla or infrared tympanic thermometer. We should use an electronic thermometer in the axilla for children younger than four weeks. What does NICE say about the clinical assessment of a feverish child? We should check for any immediate life-threatening features. We should use traffic light system to check for symptoms and signs that predict the risk of serious illness. We should look for a source of fever and check symptoms and signs associated with particular diseases. And we should measure and record temperature, heart rate, respiratory rate, capillary refill time and assess for dehydration. Could you please outline some symptoms and signs of specific diseases we should look out for? For meningococcal disease, some of the symptoms and signs are non-blanching rash, particularly with one or more of the following. An ill-looking child, lesions greater than 2 mm in diameter, purpura, a capillary refill time of greater than or equal to 3 seconds, neck stiffness. For meningitis, some of the symptoms and signs are neck stiffness, bulging fontanelle, decreased level of consciousness and convulsive status epilepticus. For herpes simplex encephalitis, some of the symptoms and signs are focal neurological signs, focal seizures, decreased level of consciousness. For pneumonia, some symptoms and signs are tachypnea, crackles, nasal flaring, chest indrawing, cyanosis, oxygen saturation less than or equal to 95%. For urinary tract infection in children aged older than three months, some symptoms and signs are vomiting, poor feeding, lethargy, irritability, abdominal pain or tenderness, urinary frequency or dysuria, and offensive urine or hematuria. For septic arthritis stroke osteomyelitis, some symptoms and signs are swelling of a limb or joint, not using an extremity, non-weight bearing, and for Kawasaki's disease, Fever greater than five days and at least four of the following. One, bilateral conjunctival injection. Two, change in upper respiratory tract mucous membranes. Three, change in the peripheral extremities. Four, polymorphous rash. Five, cervical lymphadenopathy. Thank you. What does NICE say about management by remote assessment? The first thing we should do is decide do the symptoms and or signs suggest an immediate life-threatening illness. If they do, we should refer immediately to emergency medical care. If they do not, the next stage is to look for traffic light symptoms and signs. If all are green features and no amber and no red features, the child can be managed at home with appropriate care advice. If there's any amber features but no red features, we should send the child for an assessment in a face-to-face -face setting. But if there are any red features, we should send the child for urgent assessment in a face-to-face -face setting within two hours. Can you please outline the advice about the management by a non-paediatric practitioner? Again, we need to decide, do symptoms and or signs suggest an immediate life-threatening illness? If they do, we should refer immediately to emergency medical care. If they do not, we should look for traffic light features and 
symptoms and signs of particular diseases. If all are green features and no amber or red, the child can be managed at home with appropriate care advice. If any amber features and no diagnosis reach, we should provide parent stroke carers with a safety net or refer to a paediatric specialist for further assessment. But if they have any red features, we should refer the child urgently to the care of a paediatric specialist. I'd now like to move on to the advice about the management of children aged three months to five years old by a paediatric specialist. What does NICE have to say here? The paediatric specialist should look for life-threatening, traffic light and particular diseases, symptoms and signs. If the traffic light system is green, they should perform a test for urinary tract infection and assess for pneumonia, but do not perform routine blood tests or chest x-ray. If no diagnosis is reached, manage the child at home with appropriate care advice. If the traffic light system is amber, they should perform, unless deemed unnecessary, urine test for urine, urinary tract infection, full blood count, blood culture and C-reactive protein. They should perform a chest x-ray if the fever is higher than 39 degrees Celsius and the white blood count is greater than 20 times 10 to the 9 per litre. And they should consider a lumbar puncture if the child is younger than one years old. They should consider admission. If admission is not necessary but no diagnosis has been reached, they should provide a safety net for the parent stroke carers. If the traffic light system is red, they should perform blood culture, full blood count, urine test for urinary tract infection and C-reactive protein. They should consider the following as guided by clinical assessment. Lumbar puncture in children of all ages, chest x-ray, serum electrolytes and blood gas and they should consider admission. If admission is not necessary but no diagnosis has been reached, provide a safety net for the parent stroke carers. Thank you. Can we discuss safety netting? The safety net should be one or more of the following. One, verbal and or written information on warning symptoms and how further healthcare can be assessed. Two, arranging further follow-up. Three, liaising with other healthcare professionals, including out-of-hours providers, to ensure direct access for the child if required. What's the advice about the management of babies under three months by a paediatric specialist? The paediatric specialist should look for life-threatening, traffic light and particular diseases, symptoms and signs. They should observe and monitor temperature, heart rate and respiratory rate. They should perform full blood count, C-reactive protein, blood culture, urine test for urinary tract infection, chest x-ray if respiratory signs are present, and a stool culture if diarrhoea is present. They should admit, perform lumbar puncture and start parental antibiotics if the child is younger than one month old, one to three months old appearing unwell, one to three months old with a white blood cell count of less than five or greater than 15 times 10 to the nine per litre. Whenever possible, perform lumbar puncture before the administration of antibiotics. And finally, what does NICE say about antipyretics? Antipyretics do not prevent febrile convulsions and should not be used particularly for this purpose. Do not routinely give antipyretic drugs to a child with fever with the sole aim of reducing body temperature. Do not administer paracetamol and ibuprofen at the same time but consider using the alternate agent if the child does not respond to the first drug. Thank you. Both Sunil and I would like to emphasise again the importance of looking at the NICE website for the latest advice. We'd like to thank you for listening to this podcast and hope you found it helpful and will consider downloading other podcasts from the South End Vocational Training Scheme in the future. Please let us have your feedback at the email address on the website.